So my name is Shashi. Welcome to Tauke Talks, a series of sharing sessions where we invite our local Taukes to share about their experience in different topics surrounding entrepreneurship in Malaysia. So this sharing session is brought to you by RISE, a Malaysian research and social outreach project that empowers youth through entrepreneurship and employability programs. RISE is supported by City Foundation. So this year, we aim to highlight stories of Taukes addressing different issues or topics in starting and sustaining their business. So we hope that these sharing sessions will encourage fellow budding entrepreneurs to continue preserving in their dreams of building a business in Malaysia. So I'm really happy to welcome our guest of the day, Anissa from Wholesome Eats. So welcome to Tauke Talks, Anissa. We are really honored to have you here today with us. You're inviting me, Tauke Talks. So uh, before we move on into the questions, so maybe you can introduce yourself, uh, maybe about a bit about your background and then the business that you are doing currently. Okay, sure. All right. So uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for inviting me to be your Tauke for tonight. So my name is Hanisa, but people usually just call me Hani. I am currently 25 years old, but next month I will be turning 26. Next month now. <laughs> All right. So I graduated from UPM. Uh, with a degree in dietetics back in 2019. So for those who are not familiar with the term dietetics or dietitians, we are basically food doctors without the salutation. So you don't call a dietitian doctor lah. Okay, so my business is with Wholesome Eats. Uh, it started as a home-based healthy meal prep delivery back in April of last year. So now I'm kind of in the process of expanding. Uh, my cafe, Madusa by Wheat, is going to start operating next month if everything goes uh, smoothly, lah, inshallah. So what's a meal prep delivery? Just a uh, simple explanation. We sell ready-to-eat uh, fresh and complete and balanced meal that people buy in combo and they store in the fridge and they can just heat them up in the microwave whenever they need their lunch or dinner. So it's a healthy and balanced meal every day, hassle free. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So you talked talk about like healthy, balanced food meals. So can you give like some examples of that maybe? Actually, the food that we eat every day, we can make it healthy and balanced, right? But then what we, what we do in wheat is actually we help you to portion them uh, correctly, lah, meaning that you, you eat this much amount of carbohydrate, which can be either rice or pasta. And then we have proteins such as chicken breast or dory filet or salmon. And then you definitely need your vegetables, right? So yeah. those are the things that make it uh, complete and balanced. Wow, okay. that's interesting. Yeah. So um, let's move on to the uh, question sessions, right? So uh, what are some compulsory things that people should do before they start a home-based food business? Okay, uh, some of the compulsory things that people should do before they start any kind of uh, business, they need to first do research about the business idea itself. So uh, things like, is there any competitors in your area or if you sell things online and all over Malaysia or all over the world, maybe uh, get to know the competitors in your niche and then the industry trend, will it be in demand for a long time? So is it worth it for you to pursue? So what I think uh, people can use is this triangle. I don't think this triangle have a name, but uh, it represents like three aspects that you should be looking at. When you have a business idea and you want to determine whether that business idea is good or superior. Okay, so uh, for the triangle, the first one is, uh, the first aspect is feasibility. So can we build it? Uh, how much capital do you need? Uh, do you need, uh, what skills are you need to actually do the business? So that's feasibility. And then secondly, desirability. So desirability is uh, when you sell any products or services, uh, of course, you want them to be bought by people, right? So if people don't want it, people will not buy it. So we want it to be desirable. Lah. So people want to buy it. And then the third one is viability, whether it can make you profit or not. So when you start any business, definitely you want to make profit, right? You don't want to just start a business for the sake of having a business. Okay, so that's the first one lah, to do research about your business idea. Okay, once you got a business idea and you think that the business idea is great and you want to pursue it, and then you need to construct a suitable business model. So business model, uh, you need to have the, a rough idea of how to conduct your business as a whole. So for this one, whether it's services or products that you want to provide, 
you need to use this tool called the business model canvas. So uh, even the largest company, they use this tool. Uh, it's actually uh, like a diagram. So there are nine blocks. So in the blocks, we have uh, value proposition, we have uh, whatever value proposition, customer segment, customer relationship, customer um, channels, revenue streams, and then key partners, key activities, key resources, and also cost structure. So this one you can just Google online last the business model canvas. But uh, I will say that in the business model canvas, right, uh, the most important thing to note is the customer segment. Uh, because for me, if you know the customer, then it would be much easier for you to uh, develop your business around uh, all of the uh, eight other aspects. So your customer segment, you need to build like a customer persona like, or people say buyer persona. So you create like a, a semi-fictional archetype or a character that represents a whole customer target. So you put the, uh, maybe a name like Jason Lee, uh, maybe right and then you put the gender as male and then uh, the age range maybe 25 to 35 and then what uh, does he work as and then his income so from there you can see who are going to be your target customers so from there you can uh, connect every other aspect from the business model canvas uh, meaning that what kind of values you want your product to provide to this jason right and then how are you going to uh, build relationship with jason and then how can Jason find you? So that's customer channels. And then what are the key activities you need to do? So the first one is to know your customer. Lah. Uh, so that's the business model and uh, the tool that I want to introduce to people who haven't heard it before, the BMC. And then the third one, specifically uh, compulsory that FNB business, uh, home businesses need to have is, uh, one, get a typhoid injection. Lah. Uh, and then also, have the a go to a food handling course uh, certified by the Ministry of Health. So this is very important because uh, anyone who work or deal with the food industry, such as food vendors, chef, food and beverage uh, factory workers, they all need to have this typhoid injection and also go to the food handling training. Yeah, this is to uh, the objectives of these two things are to reduce and prevent any kinds of infections that may uh, be spread through food and drink. Lah. So for typhoid injection, you can go to any government or private clinic that provide them. And then uh, I think the price range is around 50 to 70 ringgit. But yeah, so this injection will last up to three years. So after three years, you need to take another shot. Lah. And then for the food handling training, you can just go online and search for any MOH certified organization that provide the training and uh, this one is maybe around 70 ringgit but yeah uh yeah the both of them are under 100 ringgit so i would say that those three are the things that you uh, compulsory that are compulsory uh, before you start any business home based fnb business so first is to research your business idea and then construct a suitable business model and then uh, you get your type for injection and also your food handling training yeah so you mentioned about such an interesting model, the business canvas model. It's something that uh, I think like uh, many people out there who are interested in entrepreneurship might have heard about that business kind of mm. canvas model. It's a powerful model actually to start up like any business. Mm. So curious, like, uh, what was like uh, your customer segment? What was your competitor analysis look like? So when you use that particular tool, so how was your personal experience like using it? Also, who were your customer segments? Who were your competitor? And also the distribution channels that you uh, that you used. So yeah. Okay, well, that's a lot of questions actually. <laughs> Just like the business canvas model, right? So yeah, yeah, sure. yeah. yeah, I will give you some example. Uh, for my customer segment, I am targeting uh, people in the age range of. Uh, firstly, it's the gender lah. Uh, I do specifically target men or women, but looking at my Instagram analysis, mostly are female. So female and then uh, 25 to 35 years old, and then they work with uh, middle income. Lah. So meaning that they work as like government servants or office workers. So I would say that I target more on the M40 and T20 side of it. <laughs> and then uh, people who are health conscious, so health conscious, and then I know that they work nine to five, so they don't have time to cook healthy every day. So people who, want to take care of themselves every day, but then they don't have the time. 
they would opt for my meals lah because my meals are convenient, right? So just buy a combo and then uh, store in the fridge and then they just uh, you know heat in the microwave oven. So basically that's my customer segment right now. But I uh, that's the B two B lah. But uh, sorry, business to business. Yeah. Uh, but I will be targeting more in the future. Uh, for business. Eh, sorry, that was B two C business to customer. Yeah, I will be targeting B two B, which is uh, business to business and also business to government in the future. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, thank you for explaining that. So, uh, was there like any memorable mistake that you first made when you started your business, and maybe like you wish that you knew that, but then by the time like you started, it was like a miss a memorable mistake that you did that would like to share with us. Yeah. Uh... Is this a mistake? Yeah, it is a mistake. <laughs> okay, I wish I knew this lah. Uh, which is, uh, I wish I knew that my business money is not 100% my money. Okay. Uh, okay. Doesn't make sense right now. Okay, I will explain more. Okay. okay, so starting a business from home, uh, you will be thinking that all the money that you work hard for will be 100% yours, right? Yeah. And of course, they are. They are yours. But then, uh, you need to see your business as a separate identity from yourself as an individual. Because a lot of entrepreneurs the mistake of not having a separate bank account for business. Uh, and a lot of entrepreneurs, I was one of them. <laughs> yeah. So the issue is with the financial aspect because uh, the business money will be mixed up with your personal money. So uh, you don't want them to be mixed up. Okay. Because uh, it will be hard for you to analyze your sales, your profit, your losses. And then uh, it will also be very hard for you once you are going, uh, when it's time for you to pay for your taxes. Yeah, because taxes is very, it's compulsory. Okay, <laughs> Even if you just do your business uh, from home, you also need to do e-filing and everything. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you cannot and you shall not run from it. <laughs> okay, So I cannot tell you how hard uh, it has been to reorganize my finances mm -hmm. after essentially mixing up my personal and my business money. Uh, mm -hmm. Actually, before starting my business, I have two personal accounts. So what I did was, uh, there was Maybank and also CIMB. Okay. So I mostly use my Maybank account. Uh, so most of my savings are there. But then in the CIMB account, I still have some savings. Uh. So when I started my business, I use my CIMB account for people to directly pay uh, to CIMB. Lah. Okay. But then all the expenses, I use my personal Maybank money. So you can see how it can get very mixed up. So when I actually gain the knowledge of, uh, okay, I need to be separate from my business, like as, as an individual, individual and also as a business, right? So by the time I already have like a jumble of things, <laughs> looking at my bank statements, and recently I just did my uh, e-filing and it was, there was a lot of headache. Yeah. So what you need to do is, uh, my, my point is for you to better manage your finances, go and create a separate bank, a business bank account. So uh, I know that business bank account can be quite complicated to create. So if you don't want to create business bank account uh, right from the start, maybe you can create another personal bank account, but be disciplined and use that account solely for business purposes. Yeah, don't mix the personal money and also business money lah. And then once you set up a separate bank account, you have to set an amount as your monthly salary. So for example, you want 1,500 ringgit, right? So that is the amount that you need to give yourself that you need to transfer from your business account to your personal account every month, uh, at the end of every month. Uh, so the rest of the money that is left in your business account can be used to be rolling, or you can rolling the money and then you can buy equipment and then maybe, uh, cash reserve, you can use it as expansion in the future, uh, whatever lah. Okay, so I wish I knew that, <laughs> that we are separate uh, identity. And then uh, I think another one is uh, something that I find quite memorable and quite funny and silly lah. I was very secretive when I first started my business off. <laughs> I did not, uh, when I uh, opened my business Instagram account, I did not talk about it at all. I did not ask anyone I knew to follow it. Because uh, I guess at the time, <laughs> I thought that if too many, too many people know about what I'm doing, uh, I will jinx it and then the business will fail. <laughs> and also at the same time, uh, I thought that if I tell people about it, like more people would have high expectations on me. 
-hmm. and I would feel more pressure. And you know, uh, if I don't tell people, and this if this business end up failing, at least nobody would know, right? Like the level of embarrassment would be lower. Mm -hmm. uh, but then I realize now that the this way of thinking is very disruptive, lah, because uh, it's like constantly seeking external validation and also uh, the fear of being judged by others. So um, yeah, I think a lot of people do this unconsciously. So what we need to do is we need to set our company mission and vision from the start and we should aspire to achieve uh, the vision and mission uh, instead of trying to impress others when we do our business. Yeah. And now uh, I think I took a few months for me to actually start started posting about weed on my personal Instagram account. Yeah. Uh, but then after that, I received a lot of support from uh, family and friends. So uh, it has been quite overwhelming. Uh, I'm still uh, overwhelmed by all of the support. So uh, that's my advice uh, to actually talk about your business uh, whenever you have the chance. Because if people don't know that your business exists, uh, it would be harder for you to sell your product. So I think it's very silly because I was very secretive about it. Yeah. Yeah. So extremely valuable advice to those who are listening to us today. Yeah. You mentioned about like one interesting point that particularly uh, interests me, which is about managing expectations, right? So I'm sure like out there, there are many like misconceptions uh, about like starting home-based businesses. So what would you say there are like some of the examples of misconceptions out there about home-based businesses, like things you have heard from others? Uh, I mean, like people would have like certain expectations, right? But then you wouldn't like, uh, you wouldn't let, you, you didn't let it like track you or something. So uh, what are the misconceptions out there? Okay. Uh, I think one of the biggest misconceptions and that I've ever heard is that starting a home-based business will allow me to spend more time with family and friends. Uh, this is not 100% true. Uh, this may be true if you have a stabilized business, but if you start from scratch, uh, in the beginning, you won't have all the time in the world, you know, because, um, yeah, of course, you are going to work longer hours than people who work nine to five hours, because some business may require the physical labor side of it. But from what I experienced, is that uh, I can say that I constantly think about what next step should I take. So maybe it's something that I cannot control, uh, yeah. but still, uh, it takes a whole lot of time uh, in my mind. And even on the bed, uh, preparing to sleep, I cannot stop thinking about this idea and then that idea and then how um, to execute them and then problems, how to solve them, improvements, uh, what and how to do them. So it's like basically a 24-hour job. Uh, so, but this is not to say that starting a home-based business is a bad thing and sparks the life out of you. No, I'm not saying that. Lah. <laughs> uh, you are shaping your career based on what you love to do and then something that gives you a purpose in life. So you are the boss of your own life and what you need to do is you should manage your time uh, properly. So for me, I still find some time for myself. I do hobbies. For me, I like to read. So whenever I have the time, I whenever I feel like reading, I just read. So for just this year, uh, today is 16 June. I think I've read around 42 books. Yeah, last last year it was 63 for a, uh, for the whole year. And then before that was 50. So you can see that it's uh, increasing. Uh, so I did not sacrifice my hobbies uh, when I started my business. So, uh, and I also watch movies, TV series, Squid Game, I just recently watched them. <laughs> because I know that it has been quite viral for a long time. I just recently binge watched it. So you can take time to do any kind of hobbies you want. And then you can also go out with family and friends mm -hmm. while you are hustling uh, to build the life that you desire. Don't forget to enjoy uh, the present. Uh, yeah, because it's not, it's not all about the destination. It's also about the journey. Right. Yeah. And then, oh yeah, another one, uh, another misconception is that because I am the boss, I can take off whenever I want. That's a misconception too. Lah. <laughs> uh, it's a huge myth because although, yes, you don't have to punch your punch card every day, you still need to be very disciplined about it uh, because if you are a solopreneur, your yeah. customers and all your clients will be your bosses. Lah. Uh, you must take care of them, communicate with them, and convince them to remain loyal to you. 
And once you start having employees, you need to train them and then you need to be available when they need help or have questions. So you cannot just take off whenever you want uh, if you don't have anyone to back you up, especially because you are a F&B business, right? So who is going to make that curry puff? <laughs> right? Who is going to fry this curry puff for you or uh, package it in the, uh, using vacuum sealer and everything? So you still need to be, I think you need to be more disciplined uh, compared to if you work for other people uh, mm -hmm. when you are your own boss. Yeah. So you just like debunked one of the, I mean, like many of the myths about like being an entrepreneur. Yeah. So uh, just like uh, to ask you further, uh, how do you, how do your business like particularly stand out from other home, home food, food businesses out there? Uh, I would say like, what's your unique selling point that you're proposing through week? Mm, okay. So uh, how to stand out against other businesses, right? Okay, uh, I think the most important thing is the way we brand our product. Uh, previously, uh, traditionally, if we look at home-based F&B businesses, right, the ones that our grandmas, our aunties, our machi uh, has done, they don't really take this into consideration. The branding, they don't have any logo or the company name. They don't care about that. They just sell their product. But right now, we are more aware uh, home-based F&B owners are more aware about the branding aspect of it. So for me, having a strong brand with an attractive logo, uh, catchy taglines, your own color palette, even when you are uh, writing your captions, you need to have your own style, whether you want to be whimsical, friendly, sophisticated, or whatever, right? So uh, I'm happy to say that I did this even from I started uh, back in April of last year because I was lucky enough to join a three-week digital marketing course under Janya. So uh, if I go for the course myself, I would have to pay around like 7,000 ringgit again. Yeah. Okay. But I got this one for free. Yeah. So the instructor, who's an Australian digital marketing guru, uh, he taught us about uh, branding, lah, how important it is. For example, because I sell healthy food, so uh, what I use uh, in my logo is that uh, the color as you can see here, uh -huh, green and also white because they signify clean, cleanliness, health, and also freshness. So color brings a lot of uh, meaning. Uh, for example, red, right? Uh, there are a lot of f &B businesses out there that use red because red can actually make you feel hungry. Yeah, so yeah, uh, color has different psychological effects on our brain. Now. So for me, I use this color because I said just now, uh, I want it to signify cleanliness, health, and also freshness. And I also want it to be quite sophisticated. So that's why I just uh, use a logo that's minimalistic, uh, so, and, but also at the same time memorable. And then as for the business name itself, it has to uh, have its own meaning. Uh, wheat, wholesome eat, uh, it's an acronym uh, if you notice, right? Okay, it's an acronym. So wholesome eat uh, basically means food that is good for you. And then my cafe itself, Madusa by Wheat. Madusa is actually my name. Uh, stay with me. Okay, so it's Madu, right? Madu is uh, honey in Malay. So Madusa, Hanisa. <laughs> yeah. And also Madusa is a creature in Greek mythology. So Greece is a Mediterranean country and my cafe will be doing uh, Mediterranean cuisine inspired food. So yeah, you have to have those kind of meanings behind whatever you do. Uh, and also uh, at the same time, uh, it's not just the branding, uh, like I mentioned just now, you also need to present yourself uh, in a purposeful way. So you as the founder, as the owner, you need to tell your story. Lah, because people right now, they want to know that you care. Yeah? So they want to know why you actually started your business. Uh, so for me, it was to create health awareness in the community. So what I did is... Um, I use the platform to educate people. Sometimes I do Instagram Reels. So I give out diet tips, healthy eating tips, and then I do talks like this, uh, but regarding diet. Lah. And then I also answer questions. So uh, yeah, even uh, for my cafe, after it's set up, I want to do a list of community activities and also events. Lah. So I think that's how you differentiate your business from others if you are home-based. Uh, that's how you stand out, but you also need to be genuine about it, uh, about it lah. 
and you cannot be paid or anything. Uh, I still remember some of uh, a lot of my customers asking, uh, hey, where is your shop? Huh? Where can I dine in? <laughs> and I had to tell them I do not have a shop yet <laughs> because they look at my Instagram and they think that, okay, this looks like a professional Instagram. I want to go and dine in at the cafe. Uh, even some of my friends uh, asked me, have I like hired a social media manager? And I said to them, no, I don't have the money yet. <laughs> so I did everything myself. So you can use tools uh, online. For me, I use Canva because it's free, uh, some part of it. So you can use those things for the branding and to design any kind of post that you want to put on your social media. So branding is very important. So just to ask like further on branding, so which social media platform has like, do you think has far better reach among the target group that uh, you are working closely with? Whether it's Instagram, Facebook, uh, or are you on TikTok as well? No. Oh, okay. So I mainly use Instagram. Lah, uh, and I think it's uh, suitable for my customer, uh, customer segment. Okay. But uh, depends on your target audience. Lah. Uh, for TikTok, it's a much younger audience and I think you can reach more people there and recently TikTok uh, just released its shop so you can sell online like directly uh, like Instagram uh, so Facebook is for older generation I synchronize my Instagram with Facebook but then uh, I don't receive much message from Facebook lah because I know my uh, target audience are not using facebook uh, anymore they are more on instagram so yeah mostly instagram mm -hmm. right okay so um do you think that people find it harder to trust uh, home-based businesses compared to established uh, fnb businesses out there and how did you get your customers to actually trust your product how do you build that trust okay uh for the first question yes i think people are more skeptical okay because uh, the perception is that home-based F&B businesses, especially those that just recently started, right? They have no strict standards uh, to follow when they work at home and uh, no one to monitor their production process, whether it's hygienic or whether it's following SOPs or recipes. So in a way, this is kind of true. Uh, but, but when you compare uh, home-based F&B owners with established F&B businesses, right? They have I don't know, maybe like 100 or 1,000 employees and they have departments that consist of Q, uh, QA, QC, quality control, right? And admin, HR. So they have different people with different expertise doing all of these jobs while you just started your own business. You are one person and you are not very, uh, you don't have all the knowledge and skills yet. So it's understandable that you are not as organized. Lah. But then... Uh, Regarding the skepticism itself, I think it's uh, not that bad. Like, it's still manageable because people have no problem buying from home-based F&B owners. Uh, some people even prefer home-based F&B owners uh, in, uh, compared to uh, established F&B owners uh, because they feel like uh, home-based F&B owners are more uh, specialized, customized, and uh, established F&B owners are more like general so they want something special they go for home based FMB owners so how uh, what steps need to be taken for us to be uh, what's the question again the second one um how did you get your customers to trust oh, okay. yeah basically the steps. Yeah. okay how to get people to trust uh, i think the steps uh that need to be taken is to make uh, to be transparent lah. uh so owners of home based fnb are supposed to show uh uh, first one is to show them that you had your typhoid injections, your COVID vaccinations, you had been through your food handling course, and maybe you can even show that you have registered your SSM. So all of this information you can include on your Instagram bio, maybe your Facebook profile. So uh, having all of this, uh, it will give the impression that you are doing the business by the book and that you are taking your business seriously despite only doing it uh, from home. And uh, this also helps to build your credibility lah for your business. Uh, so that's one thing. And then you also need to show, uh, you can also show them how you conduct the production process. So when you make your maybe cookies, your cakes or your food, you can uh, take pictures, post them on your Instagram or right now we have stories, right? I think Instagram, Facebook, 
TikTok, yeah, everything. Uh, there are stories right now. YouTube short, yeah, you can use all of those things uh, to record the production process so people can not only see your products but also the place where you are doing uh, the cooking and the making and the packaging and everything. But uh, make sure the place is decent. Now you don't want to show people that you have cockroaches or rats or garbage on the floor, right? You need to be smart about it too, uh, even if you want to be transparent. And then thirdly, to get people to trust you, you can get testimonials from previous customers because word of mouth is very powerful. Yeah, I can see that from um, posting on my Instagram, I can see that people engage more when I put out like testimonials from previous customers. Uh, and then the fourth one uh, to get people to trust you, uh, this one is bonus. Uh, it helps uh, if you are a subject that matter expert. So like me, right? I'm a dietitian that sells healthy food. So I'm a subject uh, matter expert lah, because I'm a dietitian and I sell healthy food. If you are like a biologist or chemist selling cakes or selling cookies, you may not be the subject matter expert. But then if your products is are good, so people would still buy from you, don't worry. Yeah, this is just an added bonus uh, yeah, if you are a subject matter expert. Yeah, so be transparent. Uh, I think that's the biggest advice uh, to get people to trust you. Yes, definitely. Definitely agree that being transparent because people witness it and then they start mm -hmm. to believe it very eventually. Yeah, totally mm -hmm. agree with that. And also I would like to ask you, what are your favorite parts of being a part of in, in a home-based business? Okay. Uh, one of the best things of uh, doing a home-based F&D business is firstly, I don't have to think of uh, about paying a huge sum of rent every month because I'm not uh, operating from a premise, uh, so I don't have to think about it. But once I start operating my cafe, I would need to, uh, in addition to food costs, I will need to think about uh, paying rent, salaries, and other expenses, right? So when you uh, start from home, I think it's the best to start from home because uh, you maybe a lot of people who start from home does not have a large capital, right? So when you start at home, you can just use your the existing equipment that you have, and then what you only need to buy are like the packaging, materials, ingredients, and that's it. So not uh too large of a capital lah if you're starting from home. But then once you have outgrown your home kitchen and you need a much larger or more efficient space then you can start to think about renting a premise to better suit your business growth. Lah. Mm. Um, oh yeah, uh, one more thing. Uh, even if you are doing something from home, right? Uh, this is something that I learned from uh, one of my classes, uh, one of the classes that I joined. Even if you are using your kitchen at home, maybe you are living with your family or your parents, or you are living with your husband, right? Uh, and they say to you, it, uh, you don't have to pay any rent or you don't have to pay the utilities, right? Uh, but actually, the best thing is to set an amount that you have to pay every month. Uh, I don't know, maybe like 50 ringgit. Set it as uh, uh, under the salary, uh, no, not the salary, under the utilities uh, segment of your expenses so that uh, one, you will uh, feel a sense of responsibility and as a practice for when you eventually have your own premise in the future because you need to know that expenses for your business is not only the food cost uh, it will also include your uh, the gas right the water electricity yeah, everything need to be paid for so start from home yeah do this uh, when you start at home yeah and also the second thing that i love uh, doing a home based business is that i don't have to commute to work <laughs> basically because my office is in my room uh, right here so, uh, and also I only need to go to the kitchen when I need to cook. And then uh, when you think about it, I think I only ever go out just to buy groceries. Uh. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, suitable for me because I'm a homebody. I don't really like going out. <laughs> so I guess that's another perk of, being, uh, of doing a home-based food business. But uh, in addition to that, uh, starting a business itself, what I love about it is that it gives me a uh, like creative freedom to shape my own career and uh, based on what I love to do lah, and also what I want to achieve because I have a lot of goals that may not all be achieved if I work for other people, you know? So uh, my life won't be as fulfilled if I don't start my own business, I don't think, yeah. 
Great, great. So um, finally, what are some tips you would like to give to a budding entrepreneur who wish to start their own home-based food businesses? Okay. Uh, I hope I've been giving some useful tips early yeah. on. <laughs> uh, but I will add some more. Uh, firstly, to be mindful of your finances. So this is very important. Uh, in the financial aspect of it, you need to do three things uh, by the end of every month, which are your income statement, your balance sheet, and also cash flow. So from these records, you need to analyze and make improvements for your business lah, to grow more. So from a uh, F&B perspective, you also need to uh, set your pricing properly so that you, uh, instead of making losses, you are making profit. You, know, you don't want to lose you want to make profit right okay and then secondly uh i think it's very important to develop a growth mindset uh, we don't have uh, we don't want to have fixed mindset okay uh, we need to keep being thirsty for knowledge and be on the lookout for ways to improve yourself for me um just recently i start, uh, i joined a pastry uh class here at college myron joho for four days so I keep uh, wanting to learn more and more and I read, listen to podcasts, I watch videos of other entrepreneurs and knowledge seeking should also include um, uh, guidance from people who have more experience than you. Lah. So I mean by that is that you need to find mentors. So by having mentors, you can ask for opinions and advice to avoid doing very awful mistakes. Uh, for me, I gain mentors from joining various entrepreneurship programs. Lah. So every mentor is an expert at something. Uh, whenever I need any advice or opinions, I just, I'm just one step away from my mentors. Okay. And then uh, thirdly, uh, fear is very normal. So especially if you are starting a business by yourself and without any business background. So the most important thing is not to let the fear stop you, um, but use it to motivate to go further. Uh, I, myself, uh, I myself have a lot of fear, but I can see that when I get over those fears, so many good things happen. So don't be afraid to go out of your comfort zone because that's where growth and also adventure lies. And last but not least, if you are tired, uh, please stop and take a rest, <laughs> take a break uh, and do things that you love. I don't know, any hobbies that you have, take a walk, go out with friends or family go on a high exercise, catch up on TV shows or anything. It is okay to do other things other than thinking about your business. Like I said just now, we might end up being burned out if we keep on doing uh, 24 hours thinking about business, right? So you can get burned out even if you're doing something that you love. So don't be too hard on yourself and take a rest. Yeah, I think these are some practical tips I can give you. Yeah. I think those are really some extremely important as well as like practical tips that uh, our budding entrepreneurs, those who are even listening to our talk today, can apply in their home-based food businesses. And also like if they wish to start one, they can def definitely apply those tips as well. So, mm -hmm. so thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, for such an insightful discussion, honey. So now we will move on to the Q&A session where I will be answering some of the questions that uh, the audience asked. So the first question, uh, is how to scale my food business. Okay, uh, scaling a food business uh, depends on what you are, uh, your objectives are, uh, but I will touch upon the subject of the money. Lah. <laughs> money is a huge, uh, it's an important factor. Uh, what I've learned now is that we don't have to use our own money to start a business or to scale up a business. So some of the ways that you can use uh, to gain the enough money to scale up your business are to borrow from your friends or family. Uh, you need to pay back, of course. <laughs> it's borrow, okay? it's not take. <laughs> and then you can do crowdfunding uh, or maybe you can find investors. If you think your business idea is uh, good enough, you can go and pitch to investors. You can find investors um, on, I think, Facebook. They have like Facebook groups and everything. And then you can also apply for grants and grants or loans. So for grants, you don't have to pay back. For loans, you need to pay back with interest. So uh, there are organizations that give out grants and 
also loans for me myself uh for my cafe i'm not using my own money uh i am using i'm borrowing from family first but at the same time i'm planning to go for a loan under pnb so some of the organizations include like pnb tekun mara you can go for those kind of loans and yeah see which one suits uh your need lah because each of those organizations have their own requirements so uh, for loans you need to prepare like a proper business plan lah and when you scale up business plan is going to be very uh, useful for you so don't feel like ala i don't want to go for loan lah i need to make like complicated business plan and all but business plan is good for you so uh, you should do that yeah. So, uh, speaking of money, capital, things like that, right? So, one of our participants asked, "What's your capital when you started with?" What's my capital? Okay, because I started from home. Like I said just now, it doesn't take much money, lah. My capital was under one thousand ringgit. Uh, I think it might, I might, be, uh, it might be just around five hundred ringgit, but yeah. Uh, because I only need to have my labeling, and my labeling, I, my logo, I just. Design on Canva, like I said, just now it's free. So, ah, uh, my label, and then I bought some materials, the containers, and then some ingredients. Yeah, that's it. I think. Ah, uh, and then I used the small oven. Ah, uh, at the time I only have like a small oven, so I used that. And then the stove. So yeah, it's under one thousand ringgit lah. So there is also another money related question. Um. <laughs> How to properly set a finance layout? So just now you mentioned about like bank accounts, things like that. So this one like more towards like the finance layout. So yeah, please answer. Okay, finance layout. Um, I have touched upon this earlier. Uh, the three things that are important, which are income statement. So income statement, uh, or we also call it profit and loss, because it shows the company's revenues and also expenses. So this one you need to see your whether you are making money or whether you are losing money. And then, uh, balance sheet. So balance sheet, uh, it's the summary of financial balances of a company. Sorry. So it includes your assets, liabilities, and then your equity. So this is also important to see your financial health. Some company they only look at the income statement and they think, okay, we are making profit. But then when they look at the balance sheet, uh, they're actually not making enough profit, huh? Okay. And then cash flow is also important. So for cash flow, we need to see the movement. Of money in and out of the company, so these three documents are important. You can just use uh, an Excel template and fill it in uh, at the end of every month, lah. And then some tips, uh, in addition to creating a separate business account, right? You need to also keep every receipt that you have. Uh, you actually need to keep them for seven years. Yeah, so seven years because we need. Uh, to keep a record of it in case like LHDN wanted to see all your receipts or anything. So we know that receipts, uh, some of the writing can fade away. So what you can do is you need to scan them and then properly organize them in your Google Drive, and it will be easy for you to reference later lah. And then second tip, um, transactions via bank online transactions. You need to put detail reference lah. Ah, uh, it's for your own um. Uh, for your own uh, benefit lah in the future if you want to uh, no not in the future you can see your financial bank statement at the end of every month so it's easier for you to check lah what these transactions are for and in addition to that if you are going to buy ingredients outside I strongly recommend you to use your debit card for uh, from your business account so that uh everything will be recorded in your bank statement so for example you went to um, supermarket. To buy fifty fifty ringgit eighty three cent uh ingredients, right? So everything will be recorded in your bank statement. What you should do is just check the bank statement at the end of uh every month. So yeah, I think those are the tips for your financial layout. Yeah, I think that was a very detailed explanation on yeah setting up financial layout. So um uh, moving on to the next question. Um, can I know if Hani has any recommendation for entrepreneurship or mentor program? So this participant is currently running a healthy consumer package group. So do you have any recommendations for entrepreneurship or mentorship program? Oh okay. Um, I have joined Price Online twenty twenty one. That's how I <laughs> I knew this. So I was last year uh, last year's participant. 
Uh, so you can join that. I think uh, it's undergoing, right, Shashi? Yes, yes, it's still undergoing. Yeah. We'll be promoting it later. Yeah, yeah okay. So uh, that's one. And then you can also go for, uh, currently I'm under Jumper PUNB. So PUNB is Perbadanan Usahawan National Berhad. Uh, it's an eight-month program. So I have my own mentor, uh, which is Encik Aiman Hakim. And then I also went for Engine. So Engine is N-G-E-N-E. Uh, -E. So it's also for uh, like beginner entrepreneurs. So they also give you uh, classes and also mentors. Uh, still undergoing that and then uh, I also applied for okay there's a lot sorry so Tube, uh, Tube is under SME Bank so you can I think but that one is already the application already ended but yeah uh, but I think once you join one program right entrepreneurship or mentorship program you will uh, constantly get advertisements <laughs> regarding other programs so Keep your eye open, or if you have time, go online and search for them online because there are so many programs out there. Uh, just need to find them. Yeah. So for the final question, I think it's a pretty interesting one. What are the mode, uh, such as whether it's food stall, food trucks, or cafes, which are in demand now? Oh, what are the modes? Okay. Uh, yeah, that's a very interesting question. Usually, people ask about what kind of uh, products they should sell, right? I think uh, instead of thinking what kind of modes, you actually need to think about the kind of products you are selling. <laughs> yeah, because food uh, will always be in demand. And the kind of modes that you use to sell the food products itself is actually based on your own uh, capital. Uh, if you have a large capital, definitely you can go for any modes like food stall, food truck, or cafes, right? If you don't have enough resources, you can't just go for cafe. So I think that's the only factor, lah, like the capital. Uh, that's what uh, decide whether you need to use food stall or I don't think there's a demand in any of it because cafes have uh, always been in demand, food stall has always been in demand, and the customer that you target actually uh, some uh, some types of customer go for food stall, some types go to food truck, yeah. So, yeah, as, uh, there's no kind of demand in the kind of mode. So. so, I think that's all with the questions and answers. Mm -hmm. So, thank you for your insights, Honey. And audience, that was Honey from Folksome Eats, sharing about the experience at uh, Talkie Talks, brought to you by Rice and supported by City Foundation. So if you want to know more information about Wholesome Eats, uh, you can follow them at uh, Facebook, uh, where with Malaysia, and also on Instagram, with Malaysia, and they have their own company website as well, which you can uh, surf to know more about the products that they are selling, and also any included nutritional information there as well uh, in the website. So uh, that was really an enlightening session today with Ani. So I think the main points that we all can learn uh, through this session is about uh, like the importance of having the triangle method, like visibility, desirability, profitability, and especially the use of business canvas model as well. And Honey talked about the importance of branding, which sets out, I mean, stands out, which helps us, our business to stand out from other businesses out there. And last but not least, the important one, transparency, so that you can actually win your customer's trust and you can eventually like promote your business to them based on trust. And I really hope all of our audience today feel inspired and motivated uh, to learn new skills and knowledge from based on Honey sharing today. So uh, if you have enjoyed this session, sign up. Oh, sorry. Before that, we have a quick poll. Uh, we'd like to know about your feedback about our Talkie Talk session. So there should be a quick poll that should be launching right now. Yeah. So while you are doing that, if you have enjoyed this session, Sign up for our next Tauke Talks with Edmund from Small Potato, which is happening on 27 June 2022 at 8 p.m. You can register at bit.ly slash leaving business behind. And before we end this session, I would like to share about Rice's latest program where you can explore further. So this is our current program, uh, which uh, Hanisha also talked a little bit about earlier. 
uh, Rise Online. So Rise Online is an online course uh, which teaches you about the basics of entrepreneurship. So you can sign up uh, to, uh, to this course, which will help you to teach about uh, a lot of uh, things that Honey shared with us today, especially on business canvas model and unique selling points, visibility, desirability, profitability, and all important elements that you need to start a business. And we also have another current program, Kachil Kachil Chiri Padi, which is a comic competition, uh, which uh, we are trying to engage with the youth, talk about youth employment, which you can participate uh, via the link here. And we also have Rise With Us. It is also currently ongoing program at Rise. So the next Rise With Us session is about transitioning to workplace. And it's about helping graduate uh, to transition from university life uh, to the yeah, working place. And you can sign up via link bit.ly slash rise with us. And it's happening on 28th of June, 2022 on Tuesday. And if you would like to know more about RISE's latest program, workshop, or even competition, please like and follow us at OK Talks on Facebook and Instagram. And to find more about our programs as well, you can like and follow us on our social media accounts. So thank you everyone for coming and see you next time, honey. I wish you all the best with your business at you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Jungle.